Welcome back to WCG 2019 Grand Finals. It is Clash Royale. Day number one for our group stage. We only have one match going on, but it seems like we're going to have a lot more matches coming up very, uh, very, very soon. I am G Club, joined by the great, wonderful Paper Thin <laughs> right here. What's going on? Man, that was a very, very good first match between Juicy J and Wen Wen Wen. Some really close games. Game number two I thought was super exciting there. And now we are moving on to Europe versus China this time. So we had Americas versus China. Now we've got Europe versus China. We have FMGG versus Kerry. Kerry from China, FMGG, a Turkish player. Mm -hmm. And of course, of course, Kerry, a Chinese player from China. Actually, for a moment, was the second place, but it's for now, for this tournament, for no reason, Furman will not be played. Kerry will be the one playing. Here we have updated standings already. Winner getting that three points. So right now, when them win, and you see Jay with that updated games. And of course, some play it seems like some players played a little more, get more amount of games than the others. Yeah, absolutely. So as time goes on, this will all kind of start to even out in terms of total number of games played. Now you can see Wen 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 just suffered his first loss on stage there against Juicy J. So a big win here for Juicy J against Wen Wen Wen. But, uh, you know, because Wen 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 was 2-0 going into that, Juicy J was 1-1. So he really needed that. Now you've got FMGG who's 1-1 one one himself going up against Carry, who really needs a win here. He's down 0-2. And we did get to see a little bit uh, before the game started uh, on stream here, G Clef, we saw uh, Tauki did end yes. up defeating Kerry uh, when they went against each other in their matchup. So that was, uh, you know, it's a little bit difficult here so far for Kerry. Let's see if he can turn it around against a very difficult opponent. In oh, yes. Yes, Kerry, it seems like uh, a lot of the points and wins just lots of having one, lots of 1-1s one across the board. It's going to be it's going to be packed of action. Just one more win might get you into the top four. All you're lo really looking for is going up to that top four, being on that knockout stage, and then you moving on. So heading heading into that top four, every single match will matter. Of course, game counts when it comes to tight point situation. It will matter, but you're really looking to just have that two win and then just escape with that match win right now. Yeah, exactly. And I think this one, you know, it's going to be difficult for Kerry. We did get to see a lot of him on the stage. Uh, at the Shanghai qualifiers, yes. this guy will play a lot of different stuff. You said he played like seven different decks and yes, seven exactly. different games that we saw him. So it's just this guy is all over the place. He's a very versatile player, at least. Yes, at least having three different types of RG, having uh, Lava Loon, Lava Clone even. So even just uh, three three weeks ago, he had all the meta decks just coming out hot, changing it every single game. And then he was trying. He was, he was also really good against Win Win Win. And that was a really big clash between Wen 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 and Kerry. It was 2-1. to one. And they also had a rematch because they couldn't finish a game in, uh, in six minutes. So that's how tight these players are, actually. So Kerry, it's, even though he has a 0-2 right now, he's certainly a player who can actually come up on top later on. Yeah, I mean, when you're that versatile, it makes your opponent really unsure of what type of deck to bring against you because you can play so many different types of things. Now, he does seem to lean towards RG as kind of his favorite base unit to start from and kind of branch off from there. Now, his opponent, FMGG, is probably the best border player we have mm -hmm. in uh, this 1v1 tournament here for Clash Royale. So he's quite good at that. He really excelled in it uh, in the Europe qualifiers. He also likes to play Royal Giant Lumberjack Furnace, as everybody kind of does these days. Of course, Balloon Miner is a favorite of his. So this guy might be the one that we see some more cycle type decks. I've seen him on the ladder playing a, a Hog Rider Mini Pekka uh -huh. Princess deck, and then you finish it off with the Rocket. He so also, yeah. You could see a lot of different stuff. He also, FMGG was not the only one, but it was rare to see just not the Moro, not the Motor Royal Hogs, just the Motor Hogs, not with the Flying Machine. It was actually with the Musketeer and the Dark Prince. So some different variations coming in hot to his deck. Second place from Europe, of course, from Turkey. Let's see what he's got made of. We see a lot of Mortar Rascal Miner coming out from this player. Not, not to mention, of course, also Goblin Giant Sparky was used three times back into the qualifiers. Carry just switching back and forth. Never played a two game of same deck. So let's see what he got. He's got Mortar Miner, Miner Balloon. I mean, you name it, Golden Pris with the Tornado. Miner Balloon RG. <laughs> Royal Hog with the Hunter. So Kerry also had some interesting ah. variations with the, especially with that range ones that you want to just keep, take care of depending on the meta. If you are really, if you're really targeting down the Baby Dragon, I think Musketeer is a re really good one. If you want to target down like the Golem Hunter, I think that's a pretty smart idea. 
Yeah, I mean, Hunter used to be super popular, but since Goblin Cage has come about, it's kind of replaced yeah. the Hunter in a way as the, the unit that kind of distracts those uh, those big brawling units. And, you know, this one I'm actually really excited about because FM and Carry both can play so many different types of decks. Like you said, Carry likes the Royal Hogs, so does FM, but FM tends to play the more standard Royal Hogs variant that we're seeing night, right now with the Barbarians Flying Machine Musketeer, which is more of a fireball bait style. Also, uh, FMGG does from time to time like to play Mega Knight Minor Poison, yeah, which so, is kind of interesting. Okay, so not like the really, really cheap cycles, but somewhat ongoing with the Hogs. I think that's both what these both players are really looking for. Maybe this will be the matchup where we actually have like really cheap cycles coming out because from all the other players, it doesn't it doesn't really seem like they're gonna play too much cycles like two point like two point six two point nine cycles going on with the miner with the hog or even with that RG happening. But these two are the ones that has the highest chance actually having those low cheap cycle decks coming out in the tournament. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I think this is if you're a cycle player, this is probably the matchup to watch. And that guy on your screen right now, FMGG. Definitely the player you want to keep an eye on as this tournament goes on. He is a player who really favors those. And like we said earlier, he's a good mortar player. He plays Ice Bow from time to time. So this guy really likes a mm -hmm. different, you know, of a wide variety of decks. And he's one that might play some of those Siege decks that yeah, aren't super common anymore, except with players who are really strong at it. Yes. I sneaked up to his account. He played 33,000 amount of games. 33,000 games. Whoa. I mean... I don't even know if he sleeps or not, but that's a <laughs> lot of games to play on your account, on even on even not just on your main. Uh, uh, of course, Carry played a lot less, 22Ks, but his win rate, Carry's win rate in all games is actually 65.3%. Wow, that's really, really high, just counting all the games, including ladder and all the Grand Challenge games, of course. But that's one of the highest win rate that we have among eight players here. Yeah, I mean, Carry's a very, very strong player, so let's see if he can get it done here against FMGG. Let's get it going. Game number one of our second match of the day. And let's see what they will bring. Carry on the bottom from China. FMGG from Turkey on top of your screen right now. All right, both players dropping the Dark Princes down here and Carry throwing out the Barbarian Barrel in front to get rid of the shield from the opponent's Dark Prince here. And uh, FMGG counters with a Mega Minion and a Barbarian Barrel of his own. Yeah, there's that. Goblin Cage once again coming down, and FM, FMGG with that Mega Minion just going to swipe once. And second time to get the Brawl allowed just in case. All right, so there is the Ice Wizard and an Ice Spirit here from FMGG. So this could be uh, kind of an interesting variant we could have here. And wow, Carry as well with the Ice Wizard here. So these decks looking fairly similar right now with Carry, Carry having the Goblin Cage. Kind of the biggest difference. Yep, a little quicker cycle with that RG comes down onto the left lane. What's he got? There's that lightning, but that's not enough to take that RG down. Has to drop that Dark Prince alongside. That's a little too much damage straight out. Yeah, that's a big amount of damage. Almost a thousand or over a thousand damage being done there by FMGG. Looks like we're gonna have the Ice Wizard Tornado variant of the Royal Giant deck here. And like we were talking about earlier, this one's starting to become more and more popular as time goes on mm -hmm. because cards like the Inferno Tower aren't being used as much. And it is, in fact, a very similar deck here from Carry as well. But this yep. one has lightning in it. Yes, a little different, but on top, I think FMGG's got that Ar Ice Ice RG, maybe the 2.9 here with even the Skeletons if he really wants to. And Carry trying to roll a little more, gathering some elixirs for possible lightning chance. But still just going to go with it. Yeah, there's the tornado. The lightning does come down and clean up the remaining units of FMGG, but he has that ice spirit available to prevent that RG from getting too many more shots. Just one more coming through. Mm -hmm. it's about 500 HP difference within the, between the Prince's Towers here. Barbarian Barrel not even getting a single hit. Here comes another set of RG. FMGG's got to use that tornado to pull it back. All right, looks like Carrie really wants to try to save up for the Lightning here, but it isn't going to come out really in time. It does clean up some units, but it doesn't really help that RG get any more shots in. Yeah, not having the RG doing any shots, and it doesn't even hit the tower, just getting all the units out on the board. I think he just wanted to cycle through another spell, and then having that Goblin Cage or that Brawler. Okay, a little bit towards the right side to get that RG on going, but... FMG just got his own lightning in his zone. This is a this is not the skeleton at the end, but RG straight walking in. 
comes out. Tornado from carries to pull it back now. Yeah, okay, let's see if the Lightning does come down here. No, FMGG has opted to cycle into defense here, throwing out the Barbarian Barrel and the Ice Wizard to slow all this up. Now there will be the splash damage coming through, so a little bit of extra damage. The good news is, is that Ice Wizard, he just tickles a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Not too much damage, so Prince gets frozen and even has to use a defensive Lightning here. And an offensive Lightning with two more shots with from their RG. FMGG is getting a little close to a game end here. Yeah, another RG shot and a lightning will do it. Now you can see Carry wants to put the pressure on the other side though. That top right hand Princess Tower turret for FMGG is already a little bit damaged, but good tornado there to drag the Royal Giant back and prevent it from getting any shots. A perfect defense coming out from FMGG. Carry does not have too much time, even the tornado might pull it back just a little bit more. He's got to defend it really, really well, having that. Stage right next to it, gotta pull it with the tornado, but still RG pretty healthy under the Mega Minion. Yeah, that brawler does some serious DPS though, so they are able to get that RG down before it can get any shots down. So both players really tightening up their defense here when it is on the line a minute 45 left in overtime. Yeah, I think it's going to be about how many actually can you pull from that tornado and how much value you can get out of the tornado pairing with your own Dark Prince, which is happening, but FMGG. There's another RG on top of that bridge, and this might be it with the incoming lightning soon. Yeah, we'll see if he can get that lightning through here. He's trying to build up the elixir for it. It does come through, so now just that one RG shot will do it, and FMGG cleans it up and takes game number one. And a great game coming out from both players, really using that tornado to pull it back. And the Royal Giants are just destroying all the clashers, destroying all the towers here as we have FMGG just pulling a little bit on top. We saw some some differences coming out from the both players. Actually, the Ice Spirit from uh, FMGG did so much, like canceling the charge from Dark Prince all the time, eliminates the damage and you can't get the RG to be eliminated as soon as possible. Yeah, exactly. I think that like exactly what you're saying, that Ice Spirit, great for slowing down the charge from the Dark Prince. Mm -hmm. It stops the Royal Giant from getting some shots, buys you some time, and also is really cheap elixir-wise, whereas Carrie's version of that card in his deck was the Goblin Cage, which is effective at slowing down the Royal Giant, but it's much more expensive. Yeah, just a little bit more expensive. You can get some RG damage off by taking, taking it into that cage and getting the Brawler out, but sometimes it's hard to time it. That's what a lot of pros are actually saying it. Uh, saying right now, Goblin Cage is a good card, if, if, especially after the buff. Sometimes just timing it and how much HP it actually has left, it's actually hard to calculate with the upcoming unit, all the way, especially the ones like the Dark Prince coming all the way from the back of the King Tower. I think that's that was one of the harder parts. And Ice Spirit, you can basically time it if you just push, push it along with your Dark Prince RG. It's just going to attach onto a unit, just jump onto it, freeze it. You're going to buy that much amount of time. I think that helped a lot more along with what you have which was Tornado. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the Ice Spirit synergizes really well with the Tornado as well. So if you don't have the Ice Spirit in Cycle, you can Tornado first and then put the Ice Spirit on there and it'll hit all of those units that got Tornadoed in there. So it combos really, really well with that Tornado. I really like what Kerry was thinking and the idea he had coming into it, but I think FM, you know, just with the combination of being a slightly cheaper deck and just playing a little bit more solidly was able to take the game there for Kerry. Yes, and just focusing all the damage along along on that bridge, pulling it with that tornado, and removing that RG from doing no damage. I think that was the key of the game, and FMGG was a little bit cleaner with that compared to what Kerry was able to do. Let's see if they bring that RG once again, or if they were just remove away from that RG. Still, we we're yet to see some more golems, and certainly these players do like to switch around and just come up with some other decks coming in game two. Yeah, we'll see what they want to bring here. If you know, if like we said, well, like we said earlier, you know, sometimes players, when you win a game, you just want to stick with it, and then if you lose a game, you also want to stick with the same deck because you think you can outcycle your opponent or find a way to get through. Now, what I'm really curious about here is I, I felt like FMGG was a little cleaner in his place with some units. For example, he knew the time he could throw a Barbarian Barrel out in front of a Dark Prince, put an Ice Wizard behind it. He could buy enough time to take out that Dark Prince, and then his Ice Wizard fights the opponent's Ice Wizard and really prevents a lot of damage coming through. So his timings and his cycles were, I felt, a little cleaner than carries here. Yeah, it's exactly. And after that kind of match, we just switch it 
If, if you were on that stage, paper then would you just switch into some other like lava that you feel comfortable, or do you think you will just keep that same, uh, keep that same thing, especially for FMGG? I think for FM, I think he can throw a curveball here. But if I'm if I'm carry, I'm definitely going into something like Lava Hound, something I'm more comfortable with. Maybe, you know, maybe something like Lava Balloon that I can really catch my opponent off guard with a little bit. Mm -hmm. Seems like Carrie's the one that's going to change things up with the Zappies coming out here. Seems the Zappies pairing up with lots of graveyard, even just the double prints. Let's see what else. And Carrie does, ha does have in preparation here. All right, a Musketeer being dropped here from Carry. There, from time to time, you see Royal Hog decks with this kind of thing. It's very uncommon, but I think more likely what you were talking about earlier is the graveyard with the princes is the much more common Zappies deck. Yep, there are some Golem decks out there with Zappies, but I think Carrie, what Carry has in his hand should be with that double prince. Very likely to be a graveyard coming out here from FMGG. Yes to see, but comes that giant skeleton. All right, so will FMGG have a graveyard of his own as well? We wait and find out. Good, really good defense here so far. That Ice Wizard getting a ton of hits in, yeah. doing a lot of value, preventing much damage coming through from that graveyard. Also got that Prince out of the way with that giant skeleton, so no worries for either players. Didn't really hurt too much. Actually, the bottom left is the one that took the most amount of damage in this game so far. FMGG is still going to push just a little bit. Got that Musketeer ready from Carrie's side. Yeah, and of course, like you talked about earlier, the Musketeer is a really nice counter to the Baby Dragon. That's why we've been seeing it quite a bit because the Baby Dragon is such a versatile unit. It has so many hit points, of course, and does splash damage. You know, it doesn't do a ton of damage per shot, but its rate of fire isn't too bad. And of course, here is the graveyard here from FMGG, and it looks like I believe, was that a defensive poison or yes, an offensive poison? It is the defensive poison from Carry. That was the final card revealed here. As you do want to have poison, of course, along with that graveyard. And FMGG does have the same. It's going to depend on the other units. They're going to be holding on to graveyard and poison for a long time. Depending on units and how far they actually get go through the bridge and the timing of those elixirs, that will be important. Let's get here locked onto the that yeah. skeleton now, so the Mega Mnir will clean that up. Yeah, good snowball there to buy that Musketeer a little bit of extra time. Now we have the Graveyard coming down here for FMGG. This time there is a Poison on top of it as well, having used the snowball oh. defensively, but now the Dark Prince gets its charge. And one more damage into the tower. That's got to hurt just a lot on the bottom left. And all FMGG has to do is drop that oh, the Prince oh, of the Cut. Oh, oh, Giant oh, oh. Skeleton. And it will do the defense. See, the Prince is a little slow on that land. Yeah, that death damage just getting out in time to take out that Prince before it can get a hit in. Now we've got the Graveyard Poison here from Carry, And it's mostly poison damage that comes through. And FMGG right away wants to counter with one of his own. There's the Tornado here from FMGG to try to drag that Dark Prince away from those skeletons. Ooh, now, because of the Dark Prince, just going behind the tower for that extra skeleton. Another Baby Dragon shot does connect to the tower. And that snowball was basically wasted. Caught one skeleton coming out from that graveyard. Carry seemed like he was in a panic mode for a second, but he's back now with the Zappies. Of course, FMBG is trying to just chip in the damage from the poison and then finish that top left. All right, let's see if Carrie's Graveyard can get anything done here immediately. The Ice Wizard, then the favored counter here for FMGG. Uh, but a lot of uh, skeletons came up in the back, but they didn't really get much done. Mm -hmm. Some great Ice Wizard use here from FMGG. Yes, that was a great drag, so the Prince does not connect at all. That Tornado FMGG certainly got this game. Few more skeleton hits. If they connect along with that poison, it might be game, but so far a perfect defense coming up for Carrie. Yeah, that time Carrie really committing hard to the defense with the Skeletons, Dark Prince, and the Zappy there. So he doesn't want to take any more damage. He knows full well that even a couple more Skeleton hits will put him into double poison range. There's only a minute 40 left in overtime, but that's enough time. But there's that charge from that Prince. Yeah, big damage going into the tower. That was a defensive poison for FMGG, so he's got to wait for another cycle to have that poison damage at the bottom left. So. FMGD certainly did not win the game yet. Carry still ongoing. The Dark Prince on the top left. Straight on doing damage. That time. Oh, he's going to activate the King Tower here. 
good tornado, but is it too little, too late here for FMGG? He is now down in Princess Tower damage up in that top left. Poison of his own to help clean up those zappies. That will be a musketeer going down there. And now we've got the Dark Prince immediately. The Ice Wizard dropped right in front of it. It's going to be about the few skeletons connecting, spawning from the other side. Dark Prince trying to charge into any target. Not, of course, not going into the Prince's Tower. The Dark Prince from FMGG is going to certainly clean things up. Let's see the skeleton. Will there. they connect even an offensive poison from FMGG? Oh, that skeleton on the bottom got a hit in. And I think that'll do it. Yes, FMGG does take game number two and the match. Yes, at the end, Kerry did have that Prince going towards that bridge. Yet any other unit right next to that bottom left Prince's Tower maybe it could have been a better defense because from what I remember that was not enough for one single poison damage to finish the game, right? Yeah, correct. You're absolutely right. I think Carrie did a great job in the middle of that game adjusting his defense, committing more units to it. You know, of course he was splitting the zappies every time, that's very standard, but then he was also dropping the skeletons in the Dark Prince, you know, making it hard to tornado those away from the graveyard. You know, because ideally you want to use that tornado offensively to pull the units away from the Princess Tower that the graveyard is on. Uh, but in the end there, Carrie's defense just wasn't consistent enough throughout the game. Yeah, so he had some perfect defense against the graveyard. I mean, that was, a, that was pretty close. Yep. He did a lot more damage on the left. There was some Prince charges, Dark Prince charges, which means these both players have such a hard time defending perfectly both sides because of Zappies, because of all the graveyard poison. But FMGG had some amazing tornado timing, making sure the charge doesn't connect perfectly. So I think that was the key uh, difference, difference making in the matchup. What a crazy game's coming out here. Yeah, that last game was really, really close and really, really good. I think FMGG overall, his his placements and his timing were just a little bit better than Carrie's. That Ice Wizard placement and usage to defend against the graveyards of Carrie's was really good. I mean, he barely took any damage from a lot of those early graveyards that Carrie tried to get through because of that. They were, you know, that Ice Wizard is outside of the poison range. It has a pretty decent range itself. Its attack speed isn't that bad, and it's flash damage. Yeah, I love the timing of the graveyard, making sure you have enough time because. Certainly your opponent is going to stop like a baby dragon or the Dark Prince coming across the bridge so that the Prince's Tower does lock onto it. And he actually waited for that graveyard knowing that there will be a unit coming down very soon. So that was also another mind game going on between the two players. I totally loved it. Graveyard versus Graveyard. How many times do we actually get to see that? Yeah, guys. Well, that will do it for this match. We're going to jump to some highlights. Stick with us. We'll be back with more Clash Royale action soon.